came about when we re-evaluated a sponsorship that we had and it was quite an old sponsorship. Uh, it was a sponsorship that wasn't really valued by the rights holders. It wasn't really supported by the media. And uh, really what we did is we took another long, hard look at it. And we thought, actually, is there value in this sponsorship? And we did a lot of workshops with our agencies and with the sponsorship team. And we also talked to a lot of players that were playing this competition. And we actually learned you know, that we actually had something that was really, really special. And the reason it was special was because the players themselves were saying to us, this is actually the most difficult or the toughest competition to win. And that's because you had to win 12 consecutive knockout games. It was played in very difficult conditions in Irish weather. Um, you know, it was played uh, you know, by amateurs who had full-time jobs and had to do lots of other things. So they kind of said to us, actually, it's, it's really, really difficult. It's actually the toughest competition. And the idea of the toughest really came from there. And, and the reason it was a hashtag, and that's how we launched it, is because our whole goal was to start a conversation you know, with the GA community and people outside of the GA community to start talking about this competition again and really to try and elevate it. So that's, that's really where hashtag the toughest came from. Yes, and I think that absolutely, and we looked at, we spoke in the presentation about our marketing budgets being restricted, and, and that very much on the outset seemed to be um, something that held us back, but actually it was a huge opportunity because it forced us into the digital space, and actually that's where people are. That's where they're spending time, that's where they're viewing content, that's where they're following their fans or their sports or their teams. So actually it pushed into, into a space where we had to work an awful lot harder to get cut through an impact uh, and social gave us that ability because we didn't have the big bucks to spend on big TV. We actually had to work a lot harder, a lot smarter to get through to social. Um, and the other piece is, and I'll go back to Mark's point, it was the debate and it really, really resonated, particularly with the grassroots level players who were playing and training week in, week out. They felt for the first time that there was somebody championing them, somebody who was looking out for them and elevating the status of the competition they were playing in and because it, it meant a lot to them and all of a sudden there was a brand saying to them, this is really important and we're going to make you look like heroes and we're going to celebrate the fact that you have to go on this journey. Um, and that really went down a storm in social media. Um, and then you have momentum. And momentum is the greatest thing because actually as soon as you have a, a bit of a conversation, a body of a conversation, you have momentum. When you put stuff new into it, it's already starting from a higher base. You're not starting from scratch every time. And that's the real benefit of having such a big community and a big conversation around hashtag the toughest. The piece really was, it was a big risk for us, particularly year one. It was, it was difficult to get some players, some professional players and some amateur players to do it, you know, because effectively they're elite athletes and their coaches and their managers and their teams don't want to do stuff. And it's hard to get access with clubs and stuff like that. But really, and, and, and Mark said in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the presentation, what came out of the footage wasn't really necessarily around who was better. It's the universality of sport. Actually, people love watching other sports from other areas in the world and seeing how they progress and how they challenge. Looking at that community piece, the family piece, and a lot of, a lot of the pro sports players, and one of them, um, Brian Schneider in particular, there's a scene and he's in, he's in the pub and he's, he's talking to the team he's just met. And he's asking them, you know, do you all know each other? And they're like, we went to primary school, we went to secondary school together, we played together. And he, was, he said, you know what, the biggest thing, my, my only regret from baseball, a huge baseball career, was that when he was 18 and when he was drafted, he could never play with his friends again. So contractually, he wasn't allowed because he was worth so much to the team that he just couldn't go back and play around with the boys and the kids. It's, it's, a, really, it's a really important point. And what, came, what came through in every single trade that we did, all of the professional players said that when they came over to Ireland and played with the local club, it reminded them of why they started playing sport in the first place, that there was a real purity about it. So in a lot of cases, most people thought when they looked at the episodes, actually the amateur players will go into a professional lifestyle and that that will be the best thing. But it was actually the other way around. All of those professional players loved, as Mark said, being back in the community, you know, back around groups of friends that they played with and just, you know, remembered why they played sport again. Because sometimes in professional sport, they lose that because it becomes about money, and contracts yeah. and trades and, yeah. and the purity of the sport sometimes can be lost. Yeah.
Yeah, it's been great. We came in yeah. last night, and unfortunately, we, when we drove down um, uh, from Venice, it was dark, so we didn't really get to see, uh, you know, the mountains. Uh, so that was a little bit disappointing. But you know, we got out a couple of times today, and it's absolutely beautiful down here. There's a nice kind of old world uh, kind of European feel about it. So uh, hopefully, we might get out about a little bit tonight, and maybe tomorrow yeah. a little bit as well. It's beautiful, and and funnily, we had a fantastic meal last night. The people have been great, um, and actually, the conference, you know, is so well. Put together, the screen is fantastic. That um, and we're very excited. And I was just, I was telling my wife only last night. I was like, this place is stunning, and we'll have to bring the family because well, it's, to come back. it's, it's, it's. We, w it wouldn't have necessarily been on our radar as a holiday destination, um, Slovenia. But wow, it's, it's actually very special.